Congratulations! You have been selected to be some of the first explorers to another planet. You obviously made the grade and have the sense of tenacity and purpose that will make you a successful space traveler. As part of the newest generation of Canadian astronauts, you will be traveling further than any astronaut before you. Traveling to other planets can take months or years, even within our own solar system. Check out all these probes we have sent on missions. What do we know about the eight planets of our solar system? Could we live on any of them? Before we think about traveling into the great beyond, let's take a look at what we have in our own backyard. The sun, it's the center of our solar system. No, that's not fire, it's plasma, a fourth state of matter more energetic than a gas. Mercury, it's really, really hot or really, really cold in the dark. Venus, here it snows pyrite and rain sulfuric acid. The moon. Its day is as long as its revolution around Earth, lasting 28 days. This is why we always see the same face of the moon. Earth. We have water in all three states of matter. Mars. It has dust storms capable of covering the whole planet. Jupiter. The big red spot. Saturn. Rings. Uranus. Once called the most boring planet of the solar system, New images reveal that Uranus is home to torrid and bizarre weather patterns unseen on any other planet. Neptune, it has the fastest planetary winds in our solar system at over 1700 kilometers per hour. Pluto was named a dwarf planet in 2006, but it has not cleared the neighborhood around its orbit. We have four other dwarf planets though, so it won't be lonely. Planet X is a theoretical ninth planet. It has not been directly observed yet, but the odds of it being real are high since it would explain why objects in the Kuiper Belt behave strangely. Phew! That was fast. Like a short walk to the store, right? But it took New Horizons nine and a half years to reach Pluto in 2015. And that was an unmanned spacecraft traveling so fast it could only do a flyby of Pluto. Space is big! Spaceship design is complicated because it depends on what type of mission you are on. As a new recruit, you are now part of Space Team Canada. We actually have multiple missions underway. We don't want to put all our eggs in one basket, now do we? Think about which mission you would like to be a part of and what you would need to consider in the design of your spaceship for that mission. Does your ship need to be aerodynamic if there is no air in space? You don't need wings for landing you would visit the surface of a planet or moon using a separate smaller vehicle. Are you willing to embark on a mission that will take years or generations? Would you commit your children to life on a starship? Any ship carrying people is going to be dominated by life support systems. Generating artificial gravity is one of the greatest challenges as the human body will atrophy, losing bone and muscle density in a zero G environment. Pseudogravity can be created through centripetal force, spinning, or acceleration, like the G-forces you will feel at blastoff. To use centripetal force, you need a ship big enough that the difference in force between your feet and head is not too noticeable. Therefore, bigger is better for human purposes, but bigger means lots more resources. The other option, continuous acceleration, uses more fuel. When you solve the gravity issue, you may need to think about how to keep your passengers alive for years, decades, or even centuries. How will you keep plants and animals? Will you have room to grow crops and raise livestock? What about recycling everything? Recreational facilities? How will you move your spaceship? Depending on what you use for propulsion, there will be payload considerations. Where will you store the fuel? If you choose to use a technology like solar sails, their massive area will be threatened by intergalactic dust. Tiny particles could cause damage to a vehicle traveling at a significant fraction of the speed of light. Repairs will need to be made if the sails become too full of holes. Dust impact would also determine where you locate your crew compartments. Crew compartments need to be bunkers with essential systems protected by many layers of physical shielding. And the risk of radiation? 
This too requires shielding. Unmanned missions might be the way to go, but these will also have instruments and technology considerations. You need to think about the purpose of your mission and design the best spaceship you can with what we know about physics so far. Companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin are developing reusable rockets and reducing the cost of space science and exploration. Stephen Hawking and Russian tech tycoon Yuri Milner are working on the development of light-propelled nanocrafts to reach Alpha Century. Will you come up with a great ship we can launch into space? Welcome to Space Team Canada. You're new astronauts now, right? Let me tell you what you really need to know about. First, to be a good astronaut, you need to train all the time. Train, what do I mean by train? You're thinking about the gym, of course, that's not all. You gotta study how rockets work. You gotta study what to do when there's problems. That's all we do, prepare, prepare, prepare. When the day of the launch comes, you'll be ready. Try to study as broadly as you can. You like science? Then study arts. You like arts? Then study maths. So that when you become an adult, you're as well-rounded as you can. We need just as much to know how to count, we need also to know how to dream, how to make big projects. And for that, you need to start with imagination. Be creative, love to work with teams, that's the future. Space exploration promotes international cooperation, the best example being the International Space Station, or ISS. Technology and research from the ISS can help us on Earth. We call these spin-offs. Since water is very expensive to take to space, NASA has contributed to water purification and recycling technologies. We could use these for parts of the Earth experiencing drought or unhealthy drinking water. Scientists and engineers invented ARED, an exercise system that prevents loss of muscle and bone in space. Data from astronauts using ARED can help us with osteoporosis research on Earth. Space exploration gives us perspective, a view of what we have to lose and what we have to protect. Right now, Earth is our only home. Space exploration also gives us hope for new worlds to call home. What would humans need to do for us to survive on different planets? We have evolved with the conditions we find on Earth. Gravity? oxygen level, water, ozone, and temperature. These are all things to consider if we would like to colonize another planet. What kind of habitats would we create? Hold on to your hats, people. We found life. Woohoo! Um, well, maybe it is just a single-celled organism, but life, not on Earth. Pretty amazing, huh? Look, I know you were expecting little green men. But the first life we encounter is probably going to be much simpler. We have one example of intelligent life in the universe. A sample size of one makes it difficult to make predictions about what other life in the universe would look like. We are biased, and we are going to look for life similar to us. How did we start? Abiogenesis, life from not life, may have happened 3.5 billion years ago on Earth. DNA and the first cell. This appearance of true cellular life after the beginning of the universe happened relatively quickly in geological terms. It's the appearance of multicellular organisms that took a long time. And humans? We're only embryos on the scale of universe time. The galaxy and the universe should be full of planets with simple cellular life. We are looking for planets with atmospheres created by biotic processes containing oxygen, methane, nitrous oxides, and ozone at concentrations impossible without a biosphere. Now, what do you think aliens would look like if they were multicellular? Good luck on your missions, brave new astronauts. We are looking forward to seeing what your generation has to offer. For the time being, Though we may be alone in this vast, expanding universe, we need to keep becoming more and more technologically advanced so we can spread life to other parts of the universe. There's too much beauty out there not to be experienced by someone. <laughs>